for your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Jesus, for your crucifixion, your death, your burial, and your resurrection. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your precious blood that you shed on Calvary's cross. And now, Lord God, we just thank you for a man to want to serve you on today, God. We thank you, Lord God, for a desire to just say thank you. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for just being our Father today. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for never leaving us nor forsaking us, God. And Lord God, we just thank you, Lord God, for us being able to just see you, Lord God, with the spiritual act today, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for transforming our lives today, God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you in advance for all that you're going to do right now, God. We thank you, Lord God, for how you're going to just transform our lives, Lord God, into the way that you have already called and chosen for it to be, God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for just removing those burdens and destroying those yokes in our lives, God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you for sending back your word, oh God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for just being with us, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for just giving us a sound man today. We thank you, Lord, for giving us a heart of repentance, God. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, God. We thank you for reigning on the just as well as the unjust, God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah for your Shekinah glory. We thank you for being our redeemer, oh God. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, Lord God, that all things have been passed away in our lives, and behold, all things have become new, oh God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for just loving us in spite of our sins, oh God, in spite of our disobedience, oh God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for loving us, God, even when we don't love ourselves, God. We thank you, Lord, for loving us even when we don't love each other, Lord God. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, God. We just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the gifts that you have given us, God. We thank you for the calling, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you for looking beyond our faults and meeting our every need, oh God. We thank you, Lord. And we thank you right now, Lord God, for all the leaders, God. We thank you, Lord, for every ministry in Greater Destiny Bible Church, oh God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for how you're going to build us up, God. We thank you, Lord God, for how you're going to transform this service, God. We thank you, Lord, for how you're going to transform this ministry, God. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we ask you right now, God, Lord God, to come in and move by your spirit, God. It's your spirit, God, that's going to dwell, God. It's your spirit, God, that is going to transform. It's your spirit, God, that is going to convert, convince, and convict, God. It's your spirit, God. It's your word, God. It's your spirit, God, that is going to take us to that place in you, oh God. It's your spirit, God, that is going to deliver us and set us free, oh God. It's your spirit, God, that is going to heal, set free, God. It's your spirit, God, that is going to transform us, God. It's your spirit, God, that is going to uproot those things that's not like you, oh God. So in the name of Jesus, God, move by your spirit, Lord. Lord God, build us up, oh God, where we have been torn down, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, Lord God, transform our minds, oh God, as we meditate in your word day and night, oh God. Help us to hide thy word into thy heart, oh God, that we will not sin against you, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, purge us with hyssop, oh God, so that we can be clean, oh God. Wash us, Lord, so that we can be white as snow, oh God, because you said in your word, oh God, that you're coming for a church without spot or wrinkle, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, purify our hearts, oh God. Take out that stony heart, oh God, and put in a heart of flesh, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, Lord God, blot out all our transgressions, oh God. Create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us today, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, Lord God, you take control of this service, oh God. It's your way, oh God. Help us to surrender our all unto you, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, we bind every hindering spirit right now that will try to come up against our spiritual growth today. In the name of Jesus, we take authority over everything that's not like God. In the name of Jesus, we bind all hindrance, all bitterness, all anger, all jealousy, envy, strife. 
In the name of Jesus, we come against confusion in the church right now. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord God, help us to love like you love, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, help us to forgive, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, open up our hearts to receive your word on today, God, so that it can change us, oh God, so that we can be more like you, oh God. Transform us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, Lord God, we just thank you right now for what you're going to do, God. Rest on your people today. Rest on this house, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, move, Lord God. Speak to your people, God. Open up those deaf ears, oh God, so that we can hear what your spirit has to say to us today, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, let us say yes to you with our hearts, God. In the name of Jesus, God. Move, God. We ban the spirit of hypocrisy out of this church right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. I speak life to the body of Christ today. Lord God, be with us. Speak on today, oh God. Lord God, rest on them, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God. Build them up, oh God. Stand up in them, oh God. Encourage them, oh God. Strengthen him, oh God. Anoint him afresh, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God. Open up his mouth, God. Lord God, you speak, Lord. Lord God, let the words flow out of his mouth like rivers of water, oh God. Hallelujah. Let it fall on deaf ears, oh God. Let it mend someone's heart on today, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Have your way, oh God. Lord God, we just give you all the honor and glory and praise for what you're going to do, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. If we can give way to scripture, I'm going to be reading from Psalms chapter 119, verses 33 through 40. And it says, teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes, and I shall keep it until the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Not half a heart, a whole heart. Make me to go in the, the path of thy commandments. So that means we need to read God's commandments. For therein do I delight. Incline my ear. Give your ear. Unto thy testimonies and not to the covetousness. Turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity. And quicken thou me in thy way. Establish thy word unto thy servant who is devoted to thy fear. We got to fear the Lord. Turn away from my reproach which I fear. For thy judgments are good. Sometimes we got to learn how to, to be judged, but be judged in the right way. Behold, I have longed after thy percepts. Quicken me in thy righteousness. And the word of the Lord is already blessed. Come on, Grady, let's put those hands together. Come on, we talking about putting our hands Hallelujah. together for God. Hallelujah. For the Alpha and Omega. For El Shaddai, for Adonai. The I am that I am. We're talking about God who woke you up this morning. Hallelujah. Who clothed you, not just in your right mind, but you got clothes on your back. Who put food on your table. You may not have cooked it yet, but you still got food. Come on, come on. Let's bless God in this house. He's great and greatly to be praised. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. He's the same that he was yesterday. He's still God today. He's going to be God tomorrow. Hallelujah. So come on and bless God in this house. Hallelujah. We come to exalt the name of our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't stop because your, your deliverance is in your praise. That's your way of saying, God, thank you. That's your way of saying, God, I appreciate you. That's your way of saying, God, I love you. I adore you. Hallelujah. 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 I love you, Lord. Come on, come on. And I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul. Rejoice. Joy, my King, in what you hear, let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. I love. 
Let there be a manifestation of miracles like never before seen. God, get in our business. Get in our stuff. Get all up in our lives, God. Take out of us what doesn't belong and put in us what you would have to be put in us. Create in us a clean heart and renew the right spirit within us. In the name of Jesus, we, we declare today that God, you're going to move us to another level. We declare today that it's all over suffering is over depression is over disease is over and we're walking into a new season we're leaving a season of some more and moving into a season of no more we declare today that we're going higher in another dimension for you we declare today that this is our birthday this is the Sunday we've been waiting on this is the shift we've been praying for this is the change that we've been waiting on and God we declare and decree that it's over now the situation might not be over but the way that we look at it is we're coming into your presence we're entering into glory we're going to the holy of holies we're going higher God we feel a move we need to get closer we need to get around the glory so let the glory fall let your anointing fall for where your spirit is is the spirit of liberty we're breaking ourselves loose devil you're defeated we bind you now in the name of Jesus we lay hands on our kids we lay hands on our bank account we lay hands on our bodies we lay hands on our marriage and we declare victory right now in the name of Jesus God let your spirit birth in us bust us wide open do a new thing Lord God we're speaking today that we're going higher we're declaring God that we want to go to the next level we want to go closer to you God we're moving and pushing we're praying and fasting we're believing you for greater because greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world God we're speaking deliverance we're speaking healing we're speaking a new mind right now in the name of Jesus anoint us anew and afresh Lord take us a little bit higher God I feel you move in a room take out depression take every hurt wipe it out Lord fill us with your Holy Ghost move by your spirit move by your power somebody shout yes scream yes holla yes if you receive it shout amen scream amen holla amen touch three people and tell them it's over look them in the eye and tell them it's over now look at them and tell them it's over now that thing you've been praying for God said it's right here it's in the room today and all you got to do is reach up and grab it is there anybody here that needs a shift in your life I come to tell you it's in the atmosphere reach up and grab it whatever you need it's in the room don't be dismayed don't sit there and act silly you know you need God to do it raise your hands and get what you need get everything that you've been praying for get everything that you've been fasting for get everything that you've been asking him for I hear the spirit of the Lord saying it's time for you to stretch get on your tippy toes reach a little bit higher because the higher you go the closer you are God said in this season I'm stretching you beyond where you can reach that if you stretch I'll stretch if you stretch up I'll stretch down stretch down and bless you somebody stretch Touch 
somebody tell them stretch it out stretch it out stretch it out stretch it out oh God. touch them and tell them you coming out of this baby with your arms stretched up Somebody shout, I got it, I got it, I got it. I got it, I got it. Where is it at? It's in my hands. Because I was willing to be stretched. And willing to stretch, God did it. Get your Bible really quick. Get your Bible really quick. Somebody come for a word today. Listen, is there somebody here that want to get saved? Listen. Uh, this is the church for you. Uh, this church can understand you. This pastor can pray with you, understand your anointing, not intimidated by you. I can handle your mess because God can. And this is all I want to say to you. Don't put off for tomorrow what God is asking you to do right now. You've been visiting three, four times and you've been watching and looking, you like what you've seen. But choosing a church is not your decision. God positions you where he wants you and all he requires you is to have the faith that this is where he wants you to show up and grow up. Now here's what I want to say. It's time. Don't put it off. What if I told you you were one decision away from the thing that you had been asking for and all it took was for you to say yes to God and he would say yes to you? We're going to take five seconds to praise God for your decision today. And I don't want you to make our praise in vain. I want you to have the faith to respond to the voice of God. We're not saying you got to be perfect. We're not saying you don't have a past. What we're saying is we want to receive you into God's family. There's one. Here they come, y'all. Here they come. They still coming. We'll wait on y'all in the balcony. Come on. Come on. Y'all are part of this too. Where are you at? I need y'all to make a little bit more noise than that. Come on, where my balcony at? What? I need some ministers. I need some ministers to run up in that balcony and just go to praying because it's about two or three up there in that balcony that God wants you to make that decision today. I'm sending ministers up to walk with you. All you got to do is take the steps and they're going to take you the rest of the way. All you got to do is say, hey, look, I want to go. Will you take me? Will you bring me? Look, look, there's one. There's one coming from up there. Come on. Who else is it? Hey, pastor, this is my first time coming. Look, God ain't asking you to do no... Pop goes the weasel. There's another one. God ain't asking you to do no more than some folk asked you to do the first time you met them. And God doesn't want a hookup. He wants a relationship. Look, all you got to do is say yes. Just say yes. Just say yes. Just say yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. They still coming, y'all. Just give them a second. Just give them a second. Just give them a second. They coming, they coming, they coming, they coming. Y'all celebrate them. I need some folk expecting God with me. Uh-huh. They coming, y'all. They coming, they coming. Here they come. Boom. Here they come. 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 Yeah. First time you come to church. How many first time members are there in the house? Yeah, I, I joined church the first time I came. They still here, y'all. That means you'll be here too. Come on. There go your excuse. It's out the window. Uh, I, I don't know. How many of y'all joined and you didn't know nobody here? You didn't know no. There, there go some more hands. You don't know nobody here. Come on. Just say yes to him. He's ready. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Ain't nobody looking at you funny. We all family. Amen. Look at your neighbor and tell him we all messed up. We in this thing together. 
And we all need Jesus and you need him too. Come on, let's praise God for these that have made the decision today. Come on, we can do better than that. Come on, let's celebrate them as they take them to the back. They still coming? Y'all make some noise. We got some more babies coming. Look at somebody and tell them this is going to be a regular thing. Yeah, I ask God to grow this church according to his will. And sometimes God has to stop growth because some people don't want the church to grow. But look, I want you to understand, growth does not mean that you need you, you losing attention. Because watch this, God pays attention to you every day. Take a deep breath. Do you know how much just happened right there? God paid attention. He knew you needed air, and he provided. So let me help somebody in this room. When people don't pay attention, God always does. Mm -hmm. so, so I want you to get to the place where you stop looking to people for attention that you need to look to God for attention. Amen? He is a God that provides day by day. John 15, John 15, there's a, there's a word that's just permeating in my spirit. And I believe it's going to bless you. Did we have church this morning, y'all? We've been, we, we're, we're on this series about rejection and we're talking about rejection because a lot of people are stuck in life and can't move forward because, you know, people didn't accept you and uh, people told you no and people hurt you and they did things that you didn't ask for. But see, when you get saved and you got God in your life, you got to understand that rejection is a part of the process. Jesus spent his entire ministry, Edie, dealing with people that would reject him. And when he's on the cross, the first thing he says is, Father, forgive them. Sister Tarva, how do you pray for people that are hurting you? And then, how do you forgive somebody, not after they did it, but while they're doing it? Uh, look at somebody and tell me, you, you got to be for real grown to, have to do that. You, you, you got really, to really know God to forgive somebody that didn't ask to be forgiven. <laughs> you you, you got to show enough know God to pray for somebody and forgive them while they're doing it. And they don't even know that what they're doing is wrong. Yeah, somebody say, you got to be grown. That's a grown-up conversation. And, and here's, how, here's why he could do it, because he understood who he was. Because look at what he says. He says, they know not what they do. They don't even understand what they did and why they're doing it, because if they had a revelation of who you were, they wouldn't be killing you. They'd be praising you. They wouldn't be putting you down. They would be lifting you up. They wouldn't be hurting you. They would be held, helping you. But here's what I want you to get to. Thank God that God didn't let some people see you for who you were. Amen. He let some people hurt you because you would have fooled around and spent years of your life with somebody you weren't supposed to be with. Yeah, you, you, you had children by them. Yeah, you, you gave a lot of your life to them. But God wouldn't let them stay in your life. Why? Because he had something better for you. And, and, and I want you to understand something. 
Stop talking about it. Stop talking about what they did because here's what happens is you stay frozen in where they left you and you never allow yourself to get to where God wants you to be. Look at somebody and tell them, loose it, let it go. Watch this. God, God, God let somebody lay hands on you. You gave it over to God at the altar. You start talking about it and you picked it back up again. But God said that today is the day of you walking in power and authority because I'm going to help you with something today. I'm going to help you with something today. I'm going to explain to you today why they did it. I, I, I'm going to help you get because I'm tired of you asking me, Lord, why? I'm going to explain to you today why they did it so you'll understand how you can move past it. Uh, John chapter 15, John chapter 15, very quickly. Uh, John chapter 15. Uh, it says, uh, 15, 18, verse, verse 18 through 21. Verse 18 through 21. Verse 18. It says, if the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before, Cheryl, it hated you. So simply this, <laughs> you ain't the first one that got dogged out. Jesus said, uh, I was first. <laughs> Verse number 19, if you were of the world, Look at somebody and tell them, I'm out of this world. Look at somebody else and tell them, I got an out of this world anointing. That's how I don't look, I don't trip about things that happen to me in this world. That's why I don't stress about stuff going on in the world because I'm not in, I might be in this world, but I'm not of this world. And matter of fact, I don't want the blessings in this world. I want out of this world blessings. So watch this. What is, look at what he says. He said, the world would love his own if you were one of them. But because you're not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, meaning this, you didn't choose God, he chose you. So stop acting like you did God some kind of favor because you got saved. Oh, <laughs> you did not do God a favor. Matter of fact, you weren't even smart enough to choose God. God orchestrated things in your life where you got the revelation that I need to submit to his will. Because some of your problem is you just stubborn, hard-headed, and you want to do things the way you want to do them. But his will is what's best for you. So he says, I have, not, I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. That's why they don't like you. Because you anointed. Yeah, that's why they don't like you, David, because they were standing in line for what you got. Look at somebody and tell them, yeah, I got it. And I ain't apologizing about it. So look at what he says in verse number 20. He says, remember the word that I said unto you. So watch this. All this stuff and all this hell is breaking on in your life. And this is what Jesus says. I want you in this season to hold on to the word. Because the word works. Oh, God, have mercy. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not what? Than his Lord or master. If they have persecuted me, watch this, they're going to also persecute you. So watch this. If you are a child of God, you need to bear the marks of what a Christian ought, ought to be. Too many pretty Christians in the house. When you say you ought to have some marks, you ought to look like you've been in battle. Too many folk a wall, abandon their post. You ain't got no bullet wounds. See, when you do this thing for God, you get wounded sometime. Verse number twenty-one says, "But all these things will they do unto you for who? My name's sake. It ain't about you. They ain't even doing it because of you." They're doing it because of me. So watch this. They're doing it unto you for my name's sake because they know not him that what? That sent me. They, meaning this, because they don't have a relationship with God, stop trying to be spiritual with folk that will never understand spiritual. 
Stop telling your dreams to carnal people. That's why they killed your dream instead of trying to be a part of making your dream happen. Look at somebody and tell them, stop talking to the wrong people. Say they they don't have a relationship with God. Sinners can't understand spiritual things. The reason why I know it is when you was in sin and God was protecting your crazy self, you didn't even know it was God that didn't let them bullets hit you. You didn't even know it was God that didn't let you get gonorrhea, cephalus, or AIDS. But it was only God that didn't let those things happen to you. You was in sin and you didn't even know God was blessing you. And so thanks be to God, that was a shouting point right there because if you just think back over your life, all the times you got drunk and fell asleep in the car, all the time you drove home drunk and didn't run nobody over, oh, you need me to come and get in your Kool-Aid mix. You did enough drugs for everybody on your road to be high. And God didn't let your crazy self check up out of here. You, you cancer free. You done smoke three packs of cigarettes a day. And you ain't got a sign of cancer. Somebody say, you looking for a miracle. That's one right there. And you didn't even know God was blessing you, protecting you all the while you was in sin. Why? Because you didn't even know him. Uh, Sit down. I'm going to talk at y'all today about a little something, a little story, a little something I want to talk to y'all about today. Look at your neighbor. Just tell them, neighbor, Pastor K is going to preach about why did they do it? Amen. Amen. Son, stay close. I don't know how long we're going to get to go. Some of the stuff that keeps you up all night is not how people did you the way they did you. It's why they did it. And your why has nothing to do with their reasoning. The why has everything to do with why they chose you and not somebody else. Sometimes the thing that can stress us out, strain us out, and worry us half to death is us asking God not the question why, uh, how, but asking God the question why. Why, after befriending them and attempting to be sweet to them, I treated them like any good woman should treat them, but they dogged me out and treated me like I was less than a woman. Why, after bringing my check home and treating her like the queen that she was, did she make the decision to drop me like a bad habit? Why? Why can't I have friends that will be real friends, but I got friends that will stab me in the back? Uh, Is there anybody in this room today that's ever but ask God why. Why is a perplexing question. It uh, causes us to have to go through a process of elimination of determining when God does not have the conversation back with us of determining why somebody did what they did. But can I pause for a second to really talk to you about the DNA of your enemy. Most of your enemies are not mad at you because of where you are or who you are. Most of your enemies are upset with you because they can't be you yeah your your enemies really want to be you but what they don't understand is there will never be another me oh look at your neighbor and tell them neighbor i love me some me Uh, why It, it is a perplexing question because at some point in time in all of our lives we've had to ask God why 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 Lord why do things happen the way that they happen why does my sister come in church look me right in the face and then not even speak to me why 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 does this person only call me when they need me don't never call me just to say how you doing only call me when they need something look at your neighbor just ask them neighbor have you ever had to ask why if you've lived any amount of time you've come to the place where you understand how it happened because how isn't a problem with us Rand because we understand how to do a lot of things because many of us haven't been saved so long that we forgot how to sin 
Oh, no, 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 no. Don't get super spiritual on me today. You ain't been saved so long that you forgot how to cuss somebody out. Oh, God, have mercy. You, you ain't been saved so long that you forgot how to roll one of them doobies up. You, you have not been saved so long that you forgot how to run game on people or even hustle if you got to. Look at your neighbor, just touch them and tell them, maybe you ain't been saved that long that you forgot how. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we understand how, Amelia, to do a whole lot of things, but just because you know how to do something doesn't mean that you should do something. And thanks be to God that even though we know how to do things, we don't do them no more because God saved us, changed us, transformed us, and now has put us in heavenly places. Look at somebody and tell them, I know how to do it, but God won't let me do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank God today that he sometimes hides the why of our lives because if we could act that way, think that way, treat people that way, then we would have allowed the situation to turn us into somebody that God never destined us to be. You ought to thank God above that even though the situation was out of control, you had a God that was in control of the situation. And you've never learned how not to get, never learn never watch this my brothers and sisters and you've learned how not to get caught up in things and people and now understand that if God allowed it then it was for my good somebody shout God is in control I need to talk to somebody this morning that is stressed and strained and worrying because you don't know how a situation is going to play out. Let me give you good news this morning. God is in control of everything. Now that was your praise moment right there because thank God that your enemies don't have the control that they think they do. Somebody shout God is in control. No matter how bad it looks in your life, God never ceases to be in control of whatever's going on in your life. That's why when you're going through, you got to be careful about who you talk to because you never need to talk to anybody that doesn't understand the God of your situation because sometimes people will give more control to people than they do to God. And some of your car wrecks in your own life happened because you were trying to grab the wheel. Somebody shout, God is in control. But even with God in control, Jesus says, you're going to still have haters. Don't you know that there are some people that just don't like you and don't know why they don't like you? Have you ever met somebody that the moment you met them, you just didn't like them? I mean, your spirits just didn't connect. You know, it wasn't just that you thought they was mean or anything. We just, I just don't like them. They're in this world. There are going to be people that no matter how nice you try to be, no matter how much you try to do with, do for them and to them, they just are not going to like you. That's why God never told us to like people. He told us to love people. He never told us to please people. He told us to live to please him. Our problem is we give people control that we need to give God control. We give people love that we need to first learn how to love God because when we learn how to love God, we'll learn how to love other people. Look at somebody and tell them God is in control. So, 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 my problem is, my problem is that when I got saved, they baptized me. They put me in a new membership class. They baptized me. They welcomed me into the church family. They gave me the right hand of the fellowship. They took me into the church, but they didn't tell me that when you get saved, you're going to have folk that will run you down for no reason. They didn't tell me that there would be people that would lie. Yeah, I said lie. Lie out of their lips. Smile at you in the face and lie to you to your face. Talk about you like you are some kind of dirty dog. Talk about you like you are a piece of meat at the dinner table. They will mistreat you and wish the bad for you. They didn't tell me, but here it is. Here's what Jesus said. If the world hates you, know that it hated me first. He says, I'm seasoned in haterology. Uh, 
Look, look, look at your neighbor. Na tell them, neighbor, uh, Jesus uh, has a PhD in haterology. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he, he got a PhD in haterology, meaning this ED, his haterology, they, 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 his haters didn't even wait till he was born. His haters started on him when he was in his mother's womb. And I'm talking to about 15 people in this room that folk have been trying to take you out even when you were in your mother's womb they will go abort you trying to stress your mama out the enemy been attacking you even before you was born you understand Je Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 where it says before I knew, formed thee in the belly I knew thee and ordained thee and sanctified thee a prophet unto the nation because your problem didn't happen once you got born your ha problem happened while you were yet in the womb how you know you are anointed is when the devil don't don't even want to see you alive. How you know you anointed is when your attack on your life happened before you were even born. Look at your neighbor. Tell them, neighbor, I don't mean to have a color purple spirit, but all my life I had to fight. Somebody shout haters. <laughs> He was just a baby trying to be born and they said I don't have no room for him in the end. I came to the church to teach and the ones in charge wouldn't accept me for who I was. I healed the sick and raised the dead and instead of people celebrating how God used me, they talked about I shouldn't have did it on the Sabbath. My brothers and sisters, you got to understand that Jesus understands your enemies but never let your enemies have control over your life look at somebody and tell them God is in control he says watch this I don't want you being upset because if they doing it to you I was the first one that they did it to I'll show you how to handle it here's what he says overcome evil with good do good to those that wish bad upon you pray for them that despitefully use you love them that hate you lift up those that push you down give to them that take from you look at somebody and ask them can you handle it see you can't handle it if all you try to get is revenge Oh, Mama Peterson, you got to watch revenge. You got to watch folk that are vengeful. You got to watch folk that look for revenge. Can we take for a second a spelling bee lesson this morning? Can we spell revenge? R E V E N G E. E. Stuck right in the middle of the word revenge is the word even. You got to watch people that are always trying to get even. See, even has got nothing to do with God. If all you're trying to do is get even, then you have taken God out of the equation because nothing about God is even. He doesn't bless me even. He doesn't heal me even. He gives me, somebody say, more than enough. When you attempt to get even with other people, you in essence say, God, I don't want to be who you call me to be. I just want to be at the level of my enemies. But when you are living for God and understand that vengeance is mine, said the Lord, I don't have to get even with people. People that have done me wrong, God allows you to live at a level that's over people and they always have to look up to you and you don't have to look at them. Somebody should look at your neighbor, tell them, neighbor, stop trying to get even. You going tit for tat with somebody just because they hurt you, you trying to hurt them back. Just because they talked about you, you trying to talk about them. Just because they spread a lie on you, you trying to spread lies. Or just because they did things to you, you trying to do it. Look at somebody and tell them, stop trying to get even. You living your life trying to be somebody else. You might not ever have the money Beyonce got, but be happy with what God is giving you. You might not ever drive what somebody else is driving, but learn how to praise God for what he gives you the ability. Did you forget what it was like to have to drive, ride the bus? Did you forget what it was like to have what my mama called Esau? And Jacob, uh, did you forget what it was like to have to walk and wait for things to happen? Did you forget what it was like to have no job and want one? Look at somebody and tell them, stop trying to get even. 
So he said, you can't handle, watch this, what I'm about to tell you, Kirk, as long as you're living your life trying to get even with people, as long as you're trying to fight to try to be like somebody else. The only person you should be attempting to be like is Jesus. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah I, I said it. The only person that you ought to be imitating is not me, not a deacon, not an usher, not anybody else. The only person you should attempt to be like, somebody shout, is Jesus. So now watch this. Jesus breaks this thing down for his disciples. He says, watch this. I'm going to show y'all how to understand and handle rejection. Number one, somebody shout membership. membership. Membership simply means this. I'm a part of something that's greater than me. He says, watch this. If you were of the world, the world would love you. But you're not of the world. He says, the Bible says, before you were formed in the womb, I knew you. Before you were birthed into this world, you spent time with God. You did not become you when you were born. You became you when God was intimately involved with you and in your life. That's why you won't find your life's purpose in anything other than the will of God. He spent time with you in eternity so you would spend time with him in time. Look at somebody and tell them, I, 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 I I was with God before I was here. He says, you are not of this world, but you were chosen by me. And some of the trouble you deal with is only because of your membership in my family. You got to understand that anytime you are a member of something, membership has its privileges. God have mercy. Jesus said when you are on my side the world is our opposition. Some folk can't stand you because they see God's hand on your life. They think you believe you are better than them but what they don't understand is you don't operate by the world system and standards you come to understand that you are a king's kid. Look at somebody and tell them I'm not better I'm just anointed. See, the trouble you deal with comes from the membership card you're carrying. And is there a card carrying member of the body of Christ in this house tonight? Is there anybody in this room that said, I am a child of God? It is amazing that who Jesus blesses, the world curses. And this them, this is now. Now, what we understand is not a new theme for children of God because watch this, Cain hated Abel because his worship was for real. Esau hated Jacob because of his brother's blessing. Joseph's brothers hated him because of their father's love. Saul hated David because the Lord was with him. Ahab hated Micaiah because of his prophecies. And so Jesus says the world will reject you because of your membership. But not only your membership, but watch this, he, the world will hate you because of your ownership. Somebody shout ownership. Meaning simply this, God owns me. Oh, God, have mercy. And when God owns you, he owns everything that belongs to you. Some of your problem is your job is your job. But there are a few people in this room that understand it ain't my job. It is the job that God blessed me with. The problem why, the reason why God can't bless some of y'all is the fact that you've taken possession of stuff that don't belong to you. Everything belongs to God, Psalm 24. Come here, Bible readers say, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world that, and they that dwell therein. Nothing in this world belongs to you. The reason why I know it is when you die and leave here, ain't none of it leaving with you. Look at somebody and tell them you don't own nothing. Everything belongs to God. Matter of fact, the cattle on a thousand hill is here. The silver and gold is here. The mountains, the valleys, they're all here. And I got a problem in this life when animals will bow to him and cats and dogs will respond to him but when it comes to God you won't submit to the will of God something is wrong when he can own animals but he can't own you but is there anybody in this room today that says that God owns me? He owns my hands. He owns my heart. He owns my love. He owns my house. He owns my car. Everything I got is because he owns me. Look at your neighbor. Tell him, neighbor, he owns me. 
Yeah, yeah. I I don't belong to myself. I belong to God. See, you got to understand, my brothers and sisters, ownership means I belong to him, meaning this, because you can't get to my daddy. You got to mess with his kids. See, watch this. Uh, God does not have enemies. Mm -mm. No, no. This, I got to teach this out of you because you've been looking at God the wrong way. In order for God to have enemies, it would mean that he would have to step out of glory and step down to be on the level of somebody else. Why? Because God can't have enemies because there are no formidable opponents. Okay, okay, some of y'all looking at me strange. Y'all saying, well, what about Satan? Satan is not God's enemy. <sighs> Satan is our enemy. God did not give him dominion over everything. He gave him limited power here on the earth. And a matter of fact, Satan has no business being in your face. Because he's only supposed to be behind you or under your feet. When you can't mess with my daddy, you got to try to mess with his kids. Okay, okay, he, you still not there? You still not there? If Satan can be his enemy, I want you to know he can have no way of coming close to beating God. Somebody look at your neighbor and tell him God ain't, God ain't got no enemies. Here's why I know... Who else can be everywhere at the same time? Who can know the difference between tears of sorrow and tears of joy? Who can reign on the just as well as the unjust? Who can speak and things will come into existence? Who can wipe away a tear at midnight and then turn around and give you joy in the morning? Somebody shout, God ain't got no enemies. Why does he have enemies? Because there ain't nobody on his level. Look at your neighbor, tell them neighbor. Ain't nobody on my God's level. Somebody shout ownership. Watch this. I, I, I got a revelation of this, understanding this. Uh, when I was a little boy, I had a Michael Jackson spirit. I had a Michael Jackson spirit, meaning this. Uh, I was a lover and not a fighter. No, 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 no. You don't look this good fighting every day. I can't have you. I can't, I can't have my mug getting beat all up because I, I, I like to keep this face looking pretty. Look at somebody tell he was a lover, not a fighter. But, but every now and then I, I would run into some problems, Ran. My mouth would speak things that my hands couldn't handle. And so, and so I had a fight out, out at Sunnyside Park and, and the boy, he ran me home. And so I'm running home. I get in front of my house because I understand I can't let nobody run me in my house or I'm going to have to contend with my daddy. Never let the enemy run you into, your, into God's house. You ought to fight. Fight like you never, never lose a battle in the house of God. Never fall out with your brothers and sisters because we can't afford to lose battles. Look at somebody and say, in our daddy's house. So I get to running, I'm running, I'm running, I'm running, I'm running. And I got a full half a block on them. I get to the house, I stand in the driveway, and I say that we're going to fight somewhere. We're going to fight here in front of my house. I put up my dukes. He stood up in front of me. He put his hands up in the air. He looked at me, I looked at him. I said, come on, we about to have the rumble in the jungle. He turns around, takes off running. I start dancing around like sugar ray. I said, I float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. And just when I thought I had did something great, I turned around and looked in the window, and there was my daddy standing in the window. And I came to tell somebody in this room, you will never win, lose the battles of life as long as you got a daddy that's standing in the window. You have no business losing when you got a daddy that can speak and things happen. Look at your neighbor. Tell a neighbor, who's your daddy? I got to go, y'all. 
I got to leave, but I feel, I feel a train warming up. Is there anybody here that's ready to leave the station? I dare you open your mouth up and shout, choo-choo, it's time to roll, y'all. I got to go. I told you this morning, I told you, I told you about membership. I told you the reason why they did it was because of your membership. Somebody shout membership. I told you number two was because of ownership. But number three is because of relationship. Somebody shout I'm in a relationship. And every now and then, my brothers and sisters, the relationship I have with God, it gets complicated. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, every now and then, our relationship with God, it gets a little complicated. There are times in my walk with him where it seemed like he didn't come home. There are times in my life when it seemed like he not giving me enough. There are times in my life where I got mountains that I'm climbing and it seems all like I'm all by myself. But I came today to tell somebody that when you have a relationship with God, you never have to worry about God being there for you because God knows only how to be a good daddy. Have out your neighbor and tell them neighbor, God ain't like your friends. God ain't like your baby daddy. God ain't like your baby's mama. But God is a God that is not a deadbeat dad. But he's a God that knows how to work his relationship. Just when I fear he ain't gonna do it. He sure up just in the nick of time. Is there anybody here that's got a relationship with God and it's complicated? Have I, have I your neighbor and tell a neighbor I'm in a relationship with God but every now and then I feel like quitting him. I feel like getting a divorce but thanks be to God that just when I'm ready to throw in the towel that's when the Lord will come in with his word and tell me son you ain't got to worry I promise never to leave you never to leave you alone just when I thought that they had overtaken me that's when I found out he's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother that's when I found out that he'll be there late in a midnight hour wave your hands if you're in a relationship with the Lord because sometimes it gets complicated but every trial every mountain every valley that I that I ain't been through I learned how to trust him I learned how to have faith I don't worry about why they did it they just did it to try to break me up but I I made up in my mind that for God I live and for God I'll die I I made up in my mind that no matter what happens I decided that for God is everything I need and he's got everything I need I I I decided to follow Jesus because it doesn't matter what they did. It doesn't matter how they did it. It doesn't matter why they did it. What matters most is I'm still holding on to God's unchanging hand. Is there anybody in this room still holding on? Is there anybody in this room still got faith?
faith, still believing, still trusting, still holding on to God's hand. I need to ask you one question. And the question is, do you believe it? Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Shout yes. Scream yes. Hallelujah. Find you three people and tell them it doesn't matter why they did it. It doesn't matter why they did it. It doesn't matter why they did it. I still believe him. I still trust him. I still praise him. I still lift him up. It doesn't matter. Somebody put your dukes up and say, devil, bring it on. Give me your best shot because I'm still holding on to God's hand. I'm still a child of God. Somebody shout, yeah! Praise him right where you are. I've discovered. I've made up in my mind, Jasmine. I'm never going to ask God why. I'm going to always ask God what. What am I supposed to learn from this? What am I supposed to do? What do you want me to do, Lord? Grab your neighbor by the hand and tell him, neighbor, substitute your why with a what. And if you get the what, God will reveal the why. Oh. He sometimes has to hide the why so I can learn the revelation of learning how to do the what. And if I do what he tells me, he will show me why I had to weather and suffer like I did. Because if I learn how to suffer without asking why, then I approve myself for a dimension of getting what? getting what he has for me and what God has for me it isn't just for me it's for somebody else Uh, every head bowed every eye closed in this house father in the name of Jesus there's sons and daughters in this room that are stuck on the why and God if you told them why it might stunt their growth if they knew how people that smiled in their face really didn't like them. (laughs) If they knew that the person patting them on the back was really stabbing them in the back. If they knew the person that, you know, said that they loved them was really not in love with them, but just trying to use and manipulate them. If they knew, God, some of the things that you were working out behind the scenes, they wouldn't be asking you why. They'd be asking you what. And so today, God, I I pray for a church that will be mature enough to learn how to have a grown-up conversation with you and understand that anything you have allowed in our life is a part of your will. Job never asked why. He just always answered the what. Though ye slay me, yet will I trust you. God, give us the spirit of Job. That understanding that if we learn how to pray for our friends who might be attempting to get us to curse you, pray for the very people that are leading us into our demise, then we qualify for the what. And what is the what, Lord? Double for our trouble. God, today, you were willing to put up with hatred and rejection. Teach us, Lord, how not to get caught up in why, 
but how to stay focused on what? What you put us here to do. God, we thank you. We love you, and we bless your name. Seal this time, even somebody's decision today, to say yes to you. Touch now in Jesus' name. And every heart said, amen. Amen. And amen. Pastor D, Pastor C, if y'all are coming, grace this altar today. There's some people in this room that you don't need to leave out of here the same way you came. You came with worry. You came with depression. You came with disease. You came loaded down with the weights of this world. You came with hatred in your heart because you're still mad. Because you don't understand why they did what they did. What is it about me? That, why they choose me? Why can't they do this? Why is this happening to me? And God shifted you today. He set you up to be in this room today because he wants you to stop talking about why and get you focused on your what. Stop talking about people when you need to be talking about your God. Today is your day of birthday. Today is your day of a next dimension. Here's why. Because today you're shifting your why to being your what. Even you that are watching us live via stream, just touch that screen as a point of con content connection. Just touch that screen and you're going to be a part of this dimension of glory that is going to fall even in your car, your room, wherever you're at today. Today is your day of shifting, of transformation because God is changing your why into your what. He's changing your pain into your purpose. And you're going to understand that the reason why he had to let them hurt you is because he was ushering you into the greatest dimension that you've ever seen. And here you're going to miss your destiny being stuck on people that were never going to help you anyway. Today, get your deliverance in this time of deliverance, of healing and breakthrough. Today can be your day to say yes to God. Wherever you're at, today is the day you need to do this thing that God is asking you to do. Wherever you're at in this room, before we pray for you today, if there's somebody here that knows that God wants you here to show up and grow up, you've heard the word. This was a word for your life, and you need to tell the Lord, yes, I want you to come now. I want you to come now. If you've already come, I don't want you to come. If you're here and you know that this is your church, your pastor, this is your season, your time, there's at least two of you in this room that needs to tell him yes. Come on, church, put your hands together. Where are you at? Where are you at? You need church membership. Where are you at? I know you're in here. Come on, tell him yes. Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I need two ministers to go stand at that back door. Two ministers stand at that back door. Where are you at? 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 You're not getting out of here today. You're not getting out of here today. I want you to hold, 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 hold her right there. I'm not going there yet. I'm not going there yet. This is for church membership. Church membership. You need a church. You need a pastor. Just hold it right there. We come in your way. We come in your way. Where are you at? You don't have a pastor. You don't have a church. Look at somebody close to you and tell them, you got a church home? You got a church home? Ask them. Come on, open your mouth. Ask them. Ask them. You got a church home? Come on, you got a church home? To me, you got a pastor? There's no time better than now. Let them know. I'll walk with you. I will, I will walk with you. I will walk with you. Yeah, this is aggressive church. We believe in souls getting saved. Now let's take three seconds to praise them for somebody here. Come on. If they said no, walk them on down. Come on. Come on. Come on. All right. Praise God. Now, here's, here's my second group. My second group. You heard this word. This was your word. Pastor, I need prayer because I'm accepting this shift. But I know some stuff is waiting on me when I leave. And I want to make sure I'm strengthened and fully delivered before I go here because I don't want to spend another day in depression, in lack, and missing where God wants me to be. 
Come on, flood this altar, flood this altar, flood this altar, flood this altar. Edie, come on. Oh, uh-uh. Let me, let me, let me do that. Let me do. When Jesus sent his disciples out, he sent them out two by two. Meaning this, pastor doesn't have to touch you for the anointing to flow. But because I touch these that are at this altar and they touch you, it's the same anointing, the same spirit, the same anointing that's on me can transfer and move. The same God that can heal is in the oil and you, all you got to do is rece- receive it. What matters most is if I trust their anointing and their power, then you ought to trust it too. Amen. And so because pastor is low today, I'm transferring it on these that are assigned to this ministry to lay hands on you. Now listen, there's some of y'all that's at this altar when, I, when they pray for you, you were supposed to move about church membership. You ain't going to get your full breakthrough <clears throat> trying to put conditions on what God do for you and in your life. It's time for you to learn how to submit. And submit means fully, not what you want to do. It means, yeah, you joined churches before and didn't come back. That ain't going to happen here. But today is your day to get. look at somebody and tell them, get all of it. And my prayer is today that you get everything that you're supposed to get. My prayer is today that you walk in the fullness of the power of the anointing that's in your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, move by your power and your stripes now. And we thank you now in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Where's Edie? In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Y'all just go to lay hands. Come on, y'all. Intercessors, elders. Come on. Deacons. Y'all get in position. Enlarge my territory. Enlarge my territory. Oh, Lord. Bless me. Oh, Lord, 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 bless me. Only ones laying hands need to be Pastor D, Pastor C, and Edie. Pastor D. Those of y'all that are watching us live via stream, God bless you. May heaven smile upon you is our prayer. We pray that you are blessed in this time of sharing. Till we see you again, God bless you. See you next Sunday, mid- Wednesday midweek. We'll be streaming prayerfully live at Fresh Oil Ministries in Gary, Indiana. See you then. Be blessed.